Tuesday in the shop, Custom Audio Reimagined. What do we got in the shop is a 2021 Ford Bronco two-door. This guy's getting just a minimal audio upgrade, but I figure I'd go ahead and show you what I come across, some tips and tricks and what you want to watch out for. So if you get one of these in your shop or you have one of these, you don't end up breaking things. Now this guy already went back to Ford and had the apparently JBL soundbar. Sorry for the audio, my furnace, the new parts are supposed to be delivered today. I need to uh, get that fixed. Now this is what the customer already got from the dealership. The dealership put in this JBL BB4000 soundbar. I'm gonna be honest with you, the install was hideous. I actually fixed all this when he brought it in for me to originally look at it. They left the wires just wadded up and twisted. And the best part is they had mounted the soundbar upside down. So on the other side, the JBL logos were upside down. So the installer realized what he did. So he took this plate off and flipped it around so it was right side up here, but on the other side, it was upside down. The customer uh, let me know that that was done. I told him to take it back, that that was incorrect. So they flipped it around for him. Now, originally what's up there are these four inch speakers in these pods. So when you get the sound bar, they remove the pod. Now, I'll be honest with you, uh, the sound bar sounds horrible. So I, I'm not impressed in the least. So if you have one of these Broncos and you're thinking about getting that sound bar, just don't even waste your time. I think he said it was something like $800. It is absolutely nowhere near worth that. It's a $200 sound bar at best. If you wanna go with a sound bar in the back of your Bronco for the same price as this horrible sounding JBL bar, you can get the PowerBase XL1250 and it's powered and it will blow this thing out of the water and it's just a thousand times better. So do not waste your money on this. The second locations are in the kick panels. So he has six and a halfs in the kick panels. We're gonna be replacing those with some JBL coaxles. The reason they're in the kick panels is on the Bronco, the doors come off. So just like a Wrangler, you can take these doors off. So they made the doors minimal. So we have them in the kick panels and then we also have them in the dash. Now the dash speakers, I definitely found, I don't, I don't know why they did it. Ford really over-engineered these things and the grills just pop right off, but they did a dirty trick. So I'll show you so you don't break yours because it took me about 20 minutes to get one grill off to figure out what exactly was going on. So here's the grill. I've already removed it obviously, but it, you would think it just pops right off real easy. But for some reason, Ford has done like a double layer, like right here, if you take your finger, you can kind of get your finger underneath there. This plastic piece, if you look at the grill, do you see that lip? That lip actually goes up underneath the dash right there, okay? And then you would snap it down. The, the problem is with it snapped in, you can't get any kind of tools around that edge. I got plastic tools right here in the front and you try to pop it up, but because of that lip, it fights you. And you'll sit there and try to figure out what's going on, what's going on, and then you know eventually you'll mar it up if you really get aggressive with it. So once I realized there was a lip there, you've got to take two plastic tools and you stick them in and then kind of push opposite directions. It'll push this plastic piece, see if I can push it down? It'll push this plastic piece away and this one out and you'll get it popped. Once it's popped, then you just run your plastic tool underneath both sides and it'll actually release it from there. Then you have to slide underneath with your tools and very carefully pry up, but don't bend. Because on top of that, they decided to put a lot of metal snaps. And these things are on very, very weak plastic. As you can see right there, that one's already stressed just from unsnapping it. So these things are gonna be broke a lot. I'm gonna guarantee you installers are gonna destroy these things. They're gonna get broke, they're gonna get twisted. So this is stupid. Um, honestly, if this was my vehicle, I would shave that edge right there so I didn't ever have to fight that again. I would definitely get rid of that just because it's gonna make taking this thing on and off easier. Also, these metal tabs, these are horrible. Uh, the metal tabs don't work well with light plastic they'll bend and they'll break and they just hold on too tight. I would replace them with something like these, the plastic clips. Uh, they're just way more forgiving 
Um, a lot of times they'll actually stay in the hole when you pop out the piece and they'll fall back in. So that's the only issue with these. But because they are plastic, if you do lose one behind the dash and it just goes off into another universe, you don't have to really worry about it jingling back there because it's not metal. It's not going to make any crazy noises. But this is my bin that I have for all kinds of just attachment points and everything because you never know when you need them. So because JBL is what goes in the Ford, the customer wanted to keep everything JBL. In the kick panels, we're gonna do a pair of JBL coaxial six and a halfs. And then in the dash, we're gonna be doing a pair of JBL four inch coaxials. This is the original speaker that's in the dash. There is absolutely no highs in this factory audio system and it's because they have no tweeter. They're using this as a middler, but it's just not doing enough for us, so this is definitely going to brighten up the stage. And then to round it off, we're going to give the uh, owner a little bit of base. We're going to put this underneath the driver's seat. It is a powered JBL subwoofer. Uh, the vehicle has absolutely no base in it right now, and you're never really going to get base if you take the top off, kind of like in Wranglers. So if you want to get base in like a Wrangler or a convertible or anything like that, if you really don't care about other people hearing your system, if you're doing it for you, putting a powered subwoofer under the seat is perfect because the vibrations hitting your butt will trick your brain into believing that you have bass that like you can hear, but you really can't. So you're just tricking yourself, but it works awesome. Now the factory radio in a Ford Bronco is pretty well integrated. I don't see any chance of ever being able to change these out in the future. And if you do, you would lose so many features. And it seems like it's a pretty nice looking screen, a lot of fingerprints on it, but not too bad. Uh, hopefully you can integrate video and everything in it. You might be able to do that now. I haven't even looked into these vehicles. Once you get the grill off and take the speaker out, it's just two seven millimeters that hold it in there. We can go ahead and work on putting in the new speaker. Really no big deal. There is the speaker harness for the dash. As far as removing the kick panel, it looks like we have to remove the sill and then it looks like we'll just pull the kick panel away or that grill may pop off too, it looks like. So I've got one of the JBL four inch drivers installed in the dash here in the Bronco. I left the factory one in the driver's side. I installed the new one here in the passenger side. I'm noticing that this speaker is actually over excursion. It's getting too much bass. Uh, it's actually getting to the point where the cone is making a little bit of noise. The JBL speaker sensitivity level is much higher than the factory speaker. What that means is it's more efficient, meaning the same amount of power going to that JBL speaker is going to play louder and with more energy than the factory speakers do. That's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing in this case because going to the dash, it seems to be damn near full range signal. So it was overdriving the new JBL speaker. The cone was actually making, you know, mechanical noise from the base. So to counteract that, I have put in the pack BB1PR. These are base blockers. What this is, is basically it's just an inline capacitor. You wire this in on the positive side and this will block frequencies zero to 300 Hertz. I did this already on the one I put in the passenger side. It sounds amazing. Took care of the problem. Don't have too much bass going to it and it's screaming. So we're gonna go ahead and do the driver's side and then we'll move on to the kick panels. Now that I've moved on to the uh, kick panels, just wanna show this piece comes out first. It just unsnaps, very simple. It's just the sill piece. And then the kick panel is right here. It also unsnaps. So you have an unsnap there, but you have to also pull away the piece that runs up along the inside of the door because it snaps into here, pretty common. If you want to just take the grill off, you can. There are three, well, I'm sorry, two. There's two snaps right there and then hinge tabs. So if you want to take this grill off, you would do it from this side, pop it out and then slide it away. But this is just easier and uh, I didn't know how much room I'd need, but honestly, to take those grills off would be kind of silly. Now looking down at the kick panel, this is the piece I said you gotta unsnap so you could get the kick panel out. I mean, you could remove it, but there's no reason to. So leave that in there. But if you look around the corner here, we have our speaker. It looks like it's just a uh, plastic coned six and a half. So we'll go ahead and pull that out, replace it with the new JBL driver, and that should add quite a bit of mid-range and vocals to this vehicle, which it's definitely missing. Now, upon removing the speakers from the kick panels, which these are them, you can tell that you're actually gonna need a speaker adapter. Um, that's the problem with new cars, nobody has information, but luckily 
I have this in stock and it matches up perfectly. I'm gonna use the Metra S-6600. Now, as far as the harness goes, the outer pins are the ones actually driving the woofer. The center pins are what's going up to the dash. This is the passenger side, positive is the yellow with red, negative is the green with red on that side. So we got the JBL coaxles in the kick panels. So there they are installed. I'm gonna go ahead and get the trim and everything put back in on this side, and then we'll move over to the driver's side because I'm gonna be tapping off the high level for the powered sub. So coming over here to the driver's side kick panel. Okay, so this took me a minute to figure out, but they did such a good job blending this that it was really hard. But this, you actually snap off, and there's two 10 millimeter bolts behind there. Take those out, and the kick panel will come off, and we can get to that speaker. So we went ahead and got the power wire ran. We're gonna go ahead and hit it on this stud right here. Uh, here's our power wire. It only calls for uh, 10 gauge, but I couldn't even find 10 gauge amp kits anymore, so I've got eight gauge power wire. We're running up through into that factory grommet right there, very easy. We've got the new JBL speaker there. The power wire coming in up through the grommet, right up there. I need to braid that cable still. Then the wire runs along the channel. We got the power, the ground, and then the signal lead for the high levels, and they will go underneath the carpet right there. And we've got everything completed and installed. All the wiring is done. Everything is ran under. There's the subwoofer. Now we need to mount this under the dash, which I'm just gonna double side tape because I don't want to put holes. We take the seat, we slide it back, all gone. So get that thing mounted and button this thing up. So here it is finished. Unfortunately, we're in Indiana and it snowed, so it's kind of messy. Hate showing off a vehicle that's just dirty, but dash speakers are there. Kick panel speakers are down there. If we slide the seat forward, the subwoofer is mounted right there. That's it. This baby's ready to go. Hopefully the customer's happy with it. I'm Cape Sipes. I hope this helped somebody out there with a Bronco. If you would, please subscribe, ring the bell, do the notifications, click the like button. Uh, that's the only way people will find me is if you click the like button, it'll recommend me to other people that like cars and maybe we can get a little community going. This will be great. Take it easy.